All right. Well, hi, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Jesse Dolmage, one of the financial planners at Arnold and Moat Wealth Management. I'm just going to cover a couple housekeeping items, and then Matt Hilland, another planner and a partner at the firm, will present today's webinar about long-term care insurance. So today's webinar will be recorded and as part of our webinar series about the basics of financial planning and investing. Recordings of all of our past webinars are available on our blog in case you want to check them out or share with family and friends. Just go to arnoldmote.com slash blog and click on the COVID-19 resources post. I've also shared the blog post URL in the chat window. As well, um, just a reminder that you can um, type your questions into the chat box at any time during the webinar and we'll answer questions at the end. So please stay on mute um, and we'll get to all of your questions at the end. But if you have more personal questions you don't wanna ask in a group setting, just let us know and we'll call you afterwards. Let's now turn to a very important topic that we talk about with many clients, that's long-term care insurance. As a reminder, we do not sell insurance and this is not a pitch for it. We are sharing the same type of information in this webinar that we do with clients as their fee-only fiduciary planners. And with that, I'm gonna hand the imaginary microphone over to my very knowledgeable colleague, Matt Hilland. All right, thanks, Jesse. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks for joining us today for our monthly webinar. As Jesse said, this month we're looking at long-term care insurance. And this is a important topic for a lot of retirees on top of a lot of mind uh, for retirees today. And I think that's because there are a lot of unknowns about the costs, about how much care is typically needed, uh, about how to pay for this expense. And then I think most people have seen the impact that a long-term care need has had on a friend or a family member. And so this is a topic that's on a lot of people's minds and a very important part of uh, any financial plan. And so um, let's get into it here. Why is long-term care insurance such a focal point for many retirement plans? This image here shows the average cost for different levels of care here in Cedar Rapids. And there are many different levels of care as you can see, uh, but the stat that's normally highlighted when you hear about um, long-term care needs is that full nursing home care. And if you want a private room here in Cedar Rapids, currently you're looking at about $90,000 per year today. But if you are concerned about uh, planning for long-term care, it's important to check where costs are in where you're living now or where you think you might retire you know, later on in life. Just for example, costs for full nursing care in the state of Florida rise about $25,000 per year you know, across the board from uh, what you see here for the different levels of care. New England is another just very expensive region for long-term care, for example. And costs are not necessarily cheap in Iowa, but prices here are certainly lower than um, a lot of other places in the country. And then of course, like any medical related costs, these costs have been increasing over time too. These numbers here in the second column in red, just assume a 3% annual increase over the next 20 years and what that cost would be. And this is important to consider as we start thinking about planning around the potential for long-term care and uh, looking at different ways to ensure these long-term care costs in the future. And so it might not be a surprise to you to know that both long-term care and long-term care insurance is not cheap. Uh, we'll look at exactly how much this insurance can cost in the next few slides. But I thought these statistics were interesting to just try and help relate to the likelihood of needing you know, some kind of care uh, during your life. And long-term care impacts a large number of people. And so a lot of people want insurance. These stats come from um, LLIS, Low Load Insurance Company, uh, who we've referred a few clients to. But you know, here it's showing close to half of men, close to three quarters of women will need some form of long-term care. You know, that might be assisted living or nursing care um, sometime in their life. And so a lot of people want this insurance in the first place. And then a lot of claims for this insurance pay out. You know, you can see 
um, a half to a third of these policies actually end up getting paid out. And so insurance companies are going to charge a lot for this because they know that people will end up using this insurance. This is insurance that a lot of people don't cancel later in life, like a lot of life insurances um, or things like that. And so um, on top of that, then the average need is expensive. Uh, men on average use two years of care, women on average closer to four, and about 20% of people need care that lasts five years or longer. And a good, and again, this is not necessarily five years of nursing home care, but it's still uh, five years of expenses that can really add up and really have an impact on the financial plan. And then um, a lot of people think that Medicare will cover their long-term costs, but that's not always the case and will certainly not cover you for long stays in um, nursing care facilities. To be eligible for Medicare coverage, you must meet all of the uh, four bullet points here. And you have to come from a hospital where you stayed at least three days. You have to be in an approved location. You have to be there on doctor's orders and you need to be required by that doctor to need a certain level of care. And then if you meet those requirements, Medicare will pay for at least the first 20 days. Then if you have a supplemental or a Medigap uh, insurance policy, you may be covered for stays ranging up to 100 days. If you do not have a Medigap plan, you um, will have to pay for a certain amount out of pocket before Medicare covers the rest. Today, that's about $176 per day that you'd have to pay before Medicare would uh, take care of the rest. But then regardless of whatever Medicare plans you are enrolled in, after 100 days, you will be on your own to pay out of pocket. And so for what most retirees are worried about, uh, that's needing long-term care for you know years on end, Medicare will not be there to insure you. And that's why this long-term care in insurance industry uh, exists in the first place. And so the first thing we need to answer about um, this process is finding out whether you need long-term care insurance in the first place. And of course, that's really tough to answer exactly, but we have some tools that can help. Many of you are familiar with this screen, which is just the goal planner for our financial planning software that we use to compare different scenarios usually. We usually use this to show, you know, maybe the impact of certain retirement dates or increased spending levels for a portion of your retirement. But one thing we can do is simulate a scenario where you or your spouse needs long-term care and stress test your retirement plan this way. And this is just one example of what we usually see. Long-term care is expensive. And if you need to pay for three or more years of nursing care, just for example, it's gonna have an impact on your plan. And then we can look at um, where this number is, kind of the before and after, and gauge your need for long-term care insurance. If this number fell you know, much lower, say 40 or 50%, we might know to start looking for a larger policy that provides a little bit more protection. Likewise, if the probability of success remains very high, even if we add in uh, you know, several years of long-term care expenses, it may be a sign that you're able to self-insure or just don't need as big of an insurance policy. And then, of course, we can also add uh, to these scenarios different the impacts of different long-term care insurance policies to see the impact on your plan. And just for example, here, we're showing a client that uh, if they purchased a certain policy that was within their budget, the risk of a long-term care event is uh, reduced significantly. Now, these are just a few examples, of course. We wanted to show you some tools we have that can help you make those initial decisions on whether or not you need long-term care. And this would have to be something, you know, we're um, plugging in your numbers specifically, but it's a really valuable tool just to kind of gauge the need that you might have. And so we hope your first step is, you know, obviously working with us to determine a need. Now we want to move into the process of actually buying or actually evaluating long-term care policies. We'll assume we ran through a few scenarios and it showed a risk for your plan um, in the case of a long-term care need. So now what are your choices for adding insurance to help protect against this cost? 
the first type of insurance and what we'll be spending the most time covering today is just traditional long-term care insurance. This is simple, straightforward coverage that involves an annual premium that you pay every year. And in return, it pays a certain amount towards uh, long-term care coverage when you need it. These policies have some big advantages, we think. It allows you a lot of customization to your needs. We'll look into this in the next few slides here, but it's very easy to change uh, the benefit amounts, how long it'll pay, um, and things like that. And this is very simple and straightforward coverage, which a lot of times in insurance uh, means it's one of the more affordable options. Not that it's cheap, but it's one of the more efficient options just for providing protection against um, a long-term care need. And of course, there are some people um, who this is not right for, some people that don't like this type of insurance. A few things to know is that your premiums are not locked in in these policies. They may increase over time. Um, there's also strict underwriting with these policies. If you have a big history of um, parents, grandparents, uh, brothers and sisters needing long-term care, uh, you might not qualify. They might not underwrite you for this insurance. Likewise, if you have a lot of health conditions, they might not underwrite you. And then a lot of people or some people don't like the use or lose aspect of this. It's very possible that you pay these premiums for years and then um, never need it. And your you know, money is, um, is, goes to waste or so they say. So when you shop for long-term care insurance, you're gonna have a lot of options to choose from. So we wanted to go through some of the important options uh, that you'll see in a policy when, when it's presented to you. First is just the dollar amount that you want the insurance to pay. Policies will have a total lifetime benefit. That's of course the most the policy will pay out to you over your lifetime. And then it'll also have maximum daily or monthly amounts and this is the most the policy will pay during those shorter periods. And policies will also have duration. That's how long the policy will pay out for. Here, just for example, is showing the maximum duration is, is three years. You'll have flexibility to adjust all these options, but there are um, some constraints. First on the duration limit, most insurers will only give you the option to choose between two and six years of coverage. Uh, now a decade ago or so, you were able to buy policies that offer unlimited coverage. You might have parents or friends with these policies, but if you do not own them already, you very likely will not be able to buy a long-term care policy that offers unlimited duration today. Long-term care insurers really got burned with these policies that they offered 10 to 15 years ago. And so they've really cut back on the lengths of coverage that they offer. We'll talk later about a couple other strategies you can do uh, that still exist to be able to help insure against you know, these really long stays. You also have to choose the maximum benefit that a policy can pay. This is where it's important to research the costs in your area to make sure you're buying a policy that covers you up to that amount if you need it. A person who plans to retire in Iowa, for example, can probably have a lower coverage than if you want to retire in Florida, again, just for example. Um, but these are just two of the levers that we can pull to find a policy that's you know, both affordable for you and offers enough protection. You may not need coverage that pays a full $90,000 per year and only have a need for a policy that would pay a smaller amount, for example. And maybe you could use that savings to afford a policy that has added duration just to help protect you for a longer term stay. Um, just for example, that's some of the considerations we'll be looking through in a policy. And there's other options you'll have to choose from too. There's the elimination period. This is how long you have to pay out of pocket before the insurance kicks in. Think of this like a deductible for your long-term care. And you also have the option to add inflation protection to your benefits. We showed in the first slide how the cost for long-term care can rise over time. If you are 60 years old today and buying a policy without an inflation adjustment, by the time you're 85 and use your insurance, your policy may only be paying for a small fraction of your total costs. And so uh, this insurance coverage can be really important. 
For that elimination period, this is another variable that can be tailored to what you need. Elimination periods usually range from zero to 365 days for uh, most policies. I included a chart here of the premiums. This is for a hypothetical 63-year-old male who is looking uh, for a policy that provided three years of coverage. You can see here how increasing that elimination period can decrease premiums. Uh, just for example, if you were looking for $109,000 in annual coverage, you can reduce your premium by about 30%, depending on the elimination period you select. Of course, this also means you'd be on the hook for more costs initially if you had to pay for that first full year. Um, but this, like we said, this is just one more lever you can pull to help design uh, an insurance policy that's best for you, something that you're happy with. There's usually no right or wrong answer per se in some of these details. So uh, this is just something that needs to be tailored to your needs and the risks you're, you're willing to take. And then the last important feature we want to discuss was the addition of inflation to your benefits. Usually you're choosing uh, on an inflation benefit somewhere between zero and 5%, and then also choosing compounding inflation or a fixed rate inflation. And so the, the highest protection you can get is that compound inflation benefit, and that's gonna provide you the most protection uh, against rising costs over time. But this policy is also gonna be much more expensive. Again, just to show you a hypothetical example here, so you have some idea on how the numbers uh, play out in this decision. This is the same policy we looked at on the last slide, a 63-year-old male, uh, but now for options that add in uh, inflation protection. This is showing you the two extremes here. The top section is no inflation protection at all. And the bottom 5% compounding is usually the highest, the highest that you can offer. So there's a lot of middle ground here we aren't showing you, but just to show you how much these premiums um, can vary. And again, this is a rough estimate. Your premium's always gonna depend on, on underwriting and your specific uh, health. Uh, but just to give you a ballpark range here, if you're young, and I mean, you know, by young here, I mean in your 50s and buying a policy, um, having this inflation protection might be very important for you because we might be looking at, you know, 20 or more years before you need to use this insurance. If you're buying a policy much later in life, maybe it'd be worth considering a higher initial policy with no inflation protection. You know, just for example here, a $328,000 total benefit with no inflation, you know, might come cheaper than a smaller benefit that has inflation. And so if you're worried about needing long-term care over a shorter period of time, that again might just be a, a lever you can pull to find a, a policy that's right for you. And so we wanted to introduce you to some of those uh, important options you'll have when it comes to selecting a policy. There's a couple other um, things we wanted, wanted you to know, things that you'll have to consider when buying a policy. First, we get asked a lot on when you should buy long-term care insurance. There is an absolute max usually. We see ages between 75 and 79 as the latest for a lot of insurance companies. If you're in your 60s and retiring soon or just retiring, it's definitely not too late to be looking for a policy. A lot of people think they're you know, too late looking for a policy in their 60s, and that's, that's certainly not the case. And of course, you can buy into these policies much earlier. The reason to begin buying in earlier, beginning to pay earlier, is to get that coverage locked in before there's potential for any health problems to show up. Uh, I think insurance agents are always going to push to sign up a little early because they, you know, they get more premiums and they're going to say that it's important to get this coverage in place when it's more likely you'll be able to qualify. Again, there's usually strict underwriting for this. And so if you develop health problems, it may be difficult to get this coverage um, later in life. But of course, the downside is that you may have many more years where you're paying these premiums. And so this just depends on the risk you want to take in waiting um, compared to the savings you could get from waiting. 
And then, you know, the other big question is just how much coverage should you buy? You want an idea on what the costs are in your area to start. That will help point you in at least the right direction for determining a coverage amount. And then you're selecting a duration or how long that policy will pay out for, which again, the right answer is going to depend on your situation. But um, one of the popular feature for policies that we haven't discussed yet is what's called shared care policies. And these are policies that allow for um, spouses to pool coverage essentially and share this coverage between the two spouses. And so maybe uh, two spouses could share eight years of coverage, for example. And this can help protect you in the instance of one spouse needing a longer duration of coverage and at a more affordable price than if both spouses purchased you know, eight year or long term policies independent of each other. And of course, there's a little less total coverage in this instance too, because you're sharing coverage, but this is a good option to consider, we think, um, if you're looking to reduce premiums. In addition to regular long-term care insurance, like we discussed, there are a few other alternatives available. Uh, one is deciding on a retirement care community selecting the right retirement community can really help control long-term care costs in a couple of different ways. First, they may save you money by allowing you to stay in an independent living situation, which is usually cheaper, uh, stay in that situation longer and not have to move in, into an assisted care facility so early. They can offer you know, a level of care that's kind of in between independent and assisted living to help you stay where you are a little bit longer. Next, they may offer caps on long-term care costs. For example, Cottage Grove here in Cedar Rapids advertises that if you buy into the community, your long-term care costs, should you, you know, need that expensive nursing care during your stay there, will be capped at a certain amount that's well below the market price for nursing care you know, elsewhere in the city. And now going to full nursing care at Cottage Grove is still going to be expensive, uh, so you may still want insurance, but knowing what that cost will be ahead of time and knowing that it may be lower than what you would pay um, elsewhere might help you to be able to select a long-term care policy that has a lower premium, for example, or maybe not need one at all. And lastly, several of the long-term care um, or retirement communities in the area, uh, like Methwick and Cottage Grove, are supported with large endowments or funds that um, can pay for your care should you exhaust all of your resources. In other words, as long as you meet their financial requirements when you initially enter the community, they will not kick you out if you deplete your resources while you're staying there. And this provides a very good option for those worried about, you know, very long-term nursing care needs, for example, where the cost can really be an impact to your financial plan. And we'll have a future webinar on retirement communities if you're interested more on this topic. Um, we also have a series on our blog already with interviews from four different retirement communities in the area and to look at a few of the services they offer, how they differ. Uh, and so in the meantime, look at that if you're interested or just ask us if you're uh, looking for more information right now. One other option that we see advertised a lot is what's called hybrid policies. Uh, we're including this here because these are very popular for insurance agents to sell. So if you start reaching out to some insurance brokers about long-term care, you will very likely be presented with one of these policies. So we wanted to be sure we covered them here. These hybrid policies are effectively long-term care that gets tacked on top of life insurance like whole life or universal life or also maybe a, an annuity. And while there are a wide variety of these policies available, generally they require large upfront payments and you buy into an insurance contract where you know, some of the benefits of that insurance contract can be used for long-term care costs. And just for example here, this image is from a 53-year-old male who is looking to use the cash value of a life insurance policy they had uh, to buy up or buy towards some long-term care coverage. And effectively with a $50,000 upfront payment now, they could receive up to $192,000 in long-term care coverage uh, that they could tap later if they need. 
And so just a few you know, quick observations that might be going through your head here. First, putting $50,000 down at age 53 for um, you know, only $192,000 at coverage. And this is not um, coverage that had any inflation adjustment at all is not necessarily a great deal. Uh, $50,000 could pay you know, several, a couple decades of premiums for much higher coverage, or you could just keep that $50,000 and invest it and almost self-insure that way. But there are a few pros to these policies. If you have a very large whole life or universal life policy, for example, uh, transferring that via what's called a 1035 exchange may be your best option if there would be large tax consequences for surrendering the policy. Some people also like the idea of being fully paid up for their long-term care insurance. It, we mentioned before, a traditional long-term care insurance has annual premiums that can increase over time. And here, once you've put in that required amount, uh, it's a lot, but once you put it in, the insurance is funded. Again, we don't always think this is the best you know, bang for your buck, uh, but a lot of people see this as an advantage. And then lastly, some uh, types of these policies will have less strict underwriting. And so you may not be able to qualify for traditional long-term care insurance, but you may be able to get into a policy like this that at least provides some amount of protection. So in general, we tend to point clients towards traditional policies, but of course that doesn't mean it's always the best course of action for everyone. And then lastly, if you wanna learn more, obviously please reach out to us, we're here to help. Um, we have used these two companies that are listed on the right here for clients. They work well with fee-only financial advisors like ourselves. I'm putting their names up here because they have good resources on their site if you just want to learn more. Uh, but let us know if you contact them. They work with advisors really well. We can help do a little bit of the admin work and analysis for you in the, in the application process. And then lastly, Genworth, which is a good resource if you want to find uh, the cost of care in your area. The, that calculator on the very first slide was, was a screenshot from their cost cost of care calculator that they have. And they also have a nice calculator that doesn't require you to input any phone numbers or emails where you can get uh, quotes from them. And it's very, it's, it's an estimate. Obviously your final number is going to depend on underwriting, but it's a good way just to get a ballpark estimate on what um, care may cost for you. And so that's all we had for today. Thanks again for tuning in. As a reminder, we're here to answer any questions you have. Uh, we're in the office all day today. So if this raised a question you'd like to speak with us over the phone about, uh, we're here. Or if you just want to be sure this is something we address in a future meeting, just let us know and we'll be sure to add it to the agenda. Thanks again. Happy Friday and have a great weekend.